Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.ise.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Now, there's other ways with which we can use options on ETFs. And I want to show you a couple things on the Brokers Express website. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop on here. All right, you should be seeing the Brokers Express website. Uh, for some reason you're not, please type in a chat and let me know on here. But uh, on this, what I want to do is go to the trade calculator. And just so you know, Brokers Express is the custodian with which we manage all of our client assets. So I want to show you, since we're going to be talking about FCG in a little bit, which is the ISC Natural Gas ETF, let's take a look at a natural gas stock. And let's look at Chesapeake Energy. Now, just so you know, this is not intended to be a recommendation by any means. I just want to use this for illustrative purposes because I'm going to show you another way with which we like to use charts for ways of comparing stocks to ETFs. Now, first off, let's say that we want to go long stock and we will buy one call option. Let's actually go out to July on this. Let's click Calculate. Now this looks very similar to the graphic that we saw on the page. And I want to show you all the moving parts to this. Now, with that in mind, let's say the stock went from 32 to 34 with 100 shares of it. That would be a $200 gain. Stock goes up $2 times 100, $200 gain. Let's just assume it's at 32. I know it says 3202 and uh, wouldn't quite be $200. Let's just use 200 as a nice round number to help with the the math on here. So $200 gain on this. With this ratio spread, if that stock goes to the 34 level, we actually have over a $400 gain. Now, once again, this is under the assumption that you're holding the stock until expiration. But with that in mind, you can see that this is a way with which you can create double leverage under the assumption that you're willing to hold this stock until July. Now, let's say that this stock went up to 34 tomorrow and then back down to 32 the day after. You're not going to be in a position to where you can sell the stock right there on the spot, take a quick profit. doesn't work that way. However, once again, this is for a longer-term style of investment. You're looking to get additional exposure without taking... Uh, money off the table in other areas of your portfolio. So this is a strategy with which to consider. Now, on here, it doesn't always work this easy for the front month. So you can see on this, this doesn't cost us anything. The 32 call that we're buying, $204. The two 34 calls that we're selling, you can see that that's enough premium that we take in. We actually even get a little bit of a credit on it doesn't work this way all the time. Let's take a look at this in May, the front month. You can see on here that it costs us $112 to buy a May 32 call, but we're only getting $80 in premium from the May 34s. So it's not going to work as an even money trade or a credit trade every time. Typically, the more volatile the stock, the easier that this is to work. Now, let's go back to our screens. And let's talk a little bit about correlation. Now, in a trade...
Now in a trade, there's several types of correlation that exist with an ETF. You have option correlation with how well the option correlates to the underlying. You have market correlation. We're going to talk about that as well. Then we're going to talk about the importance of it. First off, option correlation. Now if you're buying a call option on ETF or buying a put option if you're bearish or a spread, whatever the case may be, typically the correlation is based upon deltas. Now there's a bunch of other moving parts such as vega, such as theta, such as rho, such as if there's a dividend, uh, a lot of different things that are going on. Those are, those are uh, thoughts that are beyond the scope of today's presentation, but just understand that they exist. Typically, options have a measurable correlation to the underlying. Now, oftentimes people will say, well, if XYZ stock goes up in value, then the 50 delta call option will go up X percent. That's one way of looking at it. Now, granted, that's kind of the oversimplified way of looking at it. You need to look at all the factors that are involved, but it's typically measurable. The great unknown in option pricing is volatility. If volatility changes, then the correlation may or may not be there. So, and don't get me wrong, there's other factors that in it as well, but my point is, is that it's at least something with which you can kind of look at and get a fairly decent idea as to how it could work in the option world. Now, how about ETFs? How well does an ETF correlate to the underlying market? That's a very important question before investing, to ask before investing in an ETF. Uh, one thing that we like to look at is uh, how is it related to the futures contracts. So let's say that we're looking to invest in an oil ETF. Uh, how well does it correlate to how the ETF versus crude oil? You may do a comparison chart on it. Uh, or on uh, wheat or on pretty much anything that you're looking to invest in in the ETF world. How well does the actual correlation work? Now, there's all sorts of, of ETFs out there. There's stock-based, which is what we've been talking about today. Uh, there's commodity-based. You have bond on some of the commodity-based ones. GLD uh, tracks gold. SLV tracks silver. Um, there's a lot of them out there. Bond-based ETFs. Uh, you have IEF, it tracks the 7 to 10 year government treasuries. SHY tracks the 1 to 3 year government treasuries. Uh, TLT tracks the long term government treasuries. And folks, there's plenty of others. There's no shortage of ETFs out there. Uh, I, I do not have any need as an investment advisor for other ETFs that exist. Uh, there's plenty of them that exist. Uh, the problem that we have that we sometimes run into is that there's not a lot of them that actually correlate to what we want them to correlate to. Now, if you're looking at a commodity-based ETF, here's some important questions with which you need to ask yourself. Do they use a futures contract or a physical commodity? USO and UNG are two prime examples of this. They're using a futures contract within the ETF. Now, I'm not here to say anything good or bad about any of the ETFs with which I'm mentioning. I just want to let you know as to how they work. Within USO and UNG, that's an oil ETF and a natural gas ETF, what they're doing is they're actually buying the futures contract itself. And that's how it's correlating to the marketplace. GLD and SLV they actually own gold and silver. GLD tracks gold, SLV tracks silver. They actually own the physical commodities themselves. So you need to be aware of that. Now, why is that important? Well, how does the futures role ex affect your position? How do they work it? For example, futures contracts don't last forever. And every month, every quarter, whenever the futures contract expires, the ETF has to get out of one futures contract and into another. Now that may or may not be a bad thing depending on how it works, but just make sure that you have an understanding as to how it works. Is it levered? Meaning, are you getting twice as much exposure to the long side or twice as much exposure to the short side? Levered ETFs are a very hot topic in today's marketplace. If you are trading a levered ETF, 
how is the price calculated? Just because it goes up twice as much as it was intended to on day one doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go up twice as much as it was intended to on day two because of the fact that they're reset on a daily basis, typically. Not all of them, but typically ETFs are reset daily in terms of the levered ETFs. So if you look at the performance, if you see uh, the, a double levered ETF and run a comparison chart on that versus uh, the commodity itself, then it may not look the exact same over a five-week period. But it might look the exact same every day it happens. You need to be aware of this. So, for example, on a levered ETF, let's say the commodity itself goes from 100 to 101, and the levered ETF goes from 100 to 102. Okay, very good. It's, it's, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Now, on day two, it actually goes from 101 down to 100. Well, that's fine, and then the commodity itself is back at 100, where it was before. The levered ETF, on the other hand, would go from 102 down to 99 and some change, because it would be based on a percentage, not the exact same amount. So you'd actually be a little bit behind on the levered ETF. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot for two days, but over the course of several days, weeks, or months, that can add up. Once again, nothing against levered ETFs, just have an understanding as to how they work. Now let's talk about FCG. FCG is a natural gas-based ETF. FCG is a product of the ISC, and with FCG, uh, you actually are trading 30 different natural gas-based stocks. Uh, the ETF trades just like a stock, and the ETF itself has some pretty nice volume on it. When, and I'm not saying, and when I say volume, I'm referring to that it, it's liquid enough to where um, I would have no problem trading it should the need arise for a specific client. One of the caveats of FCG is that companies must have 50% of their reserves in natural gas to get into this fund. That's what I like about this from the standpoint that it's, you need to have, let's say you're looking to have natural gas exposure. Well, a couple of ways with which you can go about doing it, you can buy natural gas futures. That may or may not be a choice for you as a trader. Uh, perhaps you can invest in UNG. Sometimes it makes sense to do that. Sometimes it doesn't. Or you can go with the stocks themselves. By investing in FCG, you're getting a basket of 30 stocks that have natural gas exposure to them. Now, let's be honest. Every nat pretty much every natural gas stock that you find is also going to have oil exposure. For companies that drill for these types of things, they're going to take whatever they can get. It doesn't necessarily have to... If they, if they strike oil, they're not going to say, oh, we're looking for natural gas, we're just going to throw it back. They're going to take whatever they can get, and vice versa, if they're drilling for oil and they get natural gas, they're going to take natural gas. So, with that in mind, the companies that are in this ETF have to have at least 50% exposure and reserves to natural gas. So, what's good about this is that we have natural gas stocks within this ETF. I want to show you something. I'm going to go ahead and share the website again. Some ways with which, um, oh, sorry, wrong one. Let's take a look here. Okay, everyone should be seeing the trade calculator again. One of the things on here that you need to be aware of when, do, when doing something on a natural gas ETF is how do you want that to play out? Now, first off, it's no secret that a lot of natural gas stocks have had quite the run lately. Uh, you can base it on the fact that you've had oil exposure, base it on the fact that uh, the market's done pretty well. Whatever you want to base it on, that's fine, but uh, over the last couple months, natural gas stocks have done pretty well. With that in mind, I want to show you a way with which we like to correlate things when looking for an ETF. And let's take a look at how this would work. FCG is the one with which we're going to give an example of. And this is a benchmark that we do use all the time at Know Your Options for our clients. 
And what I want to show you here is how we like to look at a chart in terms of how well a correlation is to an underlying. So let's bring up FCG. And let's bring it up for a year. And what I want to do is run a comparison. And once again, this is on the Brokers Express website. Uh, this probably looks familiar to those of you who are Options Express clients. It's a, this is kind of the this is owned by Options Express. We're not owned by Options Express, but the, cause this cause this broker dealer is for reps and advisors, Brokers Express. So let's take a look at Chevron. By comparing Chevron, you can see that has a pretty decent correlation to it. Uh, on there, you can see Chevron has outperformed over the course of the last year, but nonetheless, that looks like it's pretty decent in terms of how it would perform in relation to natural gas. Now, another one, let's look at Chesapeake. We were looking at it earlier. You can see Chesapeake, it's still pretty similar, but since February, it's kind of come up a little bit more over the case, course of the index. Now let's look at something totally different. Let's look at the financial sector, XLF. You can see on here, and this is obvious, there's not going to be correlation between those two sectors. So this is kind of the quick snapshot way with which we like to look at how stocks may relate to an index on here. The other thing with which you can do on this is you can make this as a, in relation to how does the commodity itself perform versus the stocks itself. Uh, there's a lot of ways with which you can do this on comparison charts. And even if you're not an Options Express client, this does exist out there with other brokers, I'm sure. Um, but nonetheless, this is just kind of a quick way with which you can look for correlations within an underlying. So I think I'm going over time a little bit, so I'll start to wrap this up. Uh, in conclusion, what you need to go through, what makes the most sense for your overall portfolio? Uh, don't just focus on one section of the portfolio. Focus on the whole thing, folks. Does the ETF do what you want it to do? If it doesn't, then there's other ways to go. But does it do what you want it to do in terms of correlate the way with which you want to correlate? What we talked about here also, can this work with individual stocks? Absolutely. But is your account big enough for that? For a lot of you, paying commissions for stocks and options and or options on 30 stocks might not be feasible for you. So if you want to have natural gas, gas stock exposure, FCG could be a viable option for you. And folks, I think this is an excellent gauge of the natural gas market. I think the ISC does a great job on it. And I'm excited just to talk about it on the ISC platform. Now, a little bit about what we do at Know Your Options, and then we'll open it up for questions here in a moment. We do manage trading and investing. Uh, we believe that options can play a vital role in a retirement account, assuming it's appropriate and suitable for you. Uh, we don't. And what, I, what I mean by that is that we don't necessarily think we don't think that you should just put all your money into out of the money call options by any means, but we have no problem using that one by two ratio spread strategy with long-term money. We have no problem doing collars, married puts, and things like that. Uh, once again, options aren't for everybody, but a lot of what we do is based upon it. And if you're looking to do some short-term trading, we offer that service as well. Self-directed brokerage with added value, meaning if you want to drive the bus if you want to make the decisions yourself, but you just want to be able to call and ask someone for help in terms of, hey, what do you think of XYZ stock today? Should I be bullish or bearish? What do you think? We can help on that, as well as with, with options. That's kind of our niche. Let's say you know, a, lot of, a question that we get a lot of times is, hey, should I do a debit spread or a credit spread? Or should I do a covered call or sell a put? Or, you know, we'll get things like that. And... For those of you that are experienced in option trading, what I just mentioned are synthetic positions, uh, meaning they're the same thing. But sometimes it makes sense to do one or the other based upon pricing, based upon how you plan to adjust, and that's another way with which we help people. If you would like to contact us, feel free to go to our website, knowyouroptionsinc.com free, and sign up for our free 18-minute portfolio review. 
by doing that, uh, someone will be in contact with you and will go over any positions with which you have and or are considering. Once again, knowyouroptionsinc.com slash free. Uh, we'll be taking questions here in a moment, but if you do have any questions afterwards or you want to sign up for our free weekly newsletter, send me an email, mikeT at knowyouroptionsinc.com. Uh, with that on the email, we don't give out trade recommendations on it, but what we do is, we tr what we typically try and do is just kind of offer up some trading life lessons, uh, something along the lines of, well, we let this put expire worthless the other day, and it benefited us because, or it hurt us because, and there's usually a pretty good lesson in there for traders. And if you have any questions, uh, and I, I'm going to do my Billy Mays thing here. I always, it's always cr it's fun to do. Operators are standing by now. <laughs> Give us a call at, at the number on the screen. We're more than happy to answer any questions once this uh, event is over. And I am going to turn it back to my favorite host from the ISC. Uh, there's some resources that they'd like to tell you about. And I just want to add this to it, too. I've been doing working with the ICE for many years, and... The ISC, uh, they, they have it together, folks. And, that, and what I mean by that is that they know what they're doing with trading. Uh, they have a lot of great products, and the education with which they give is second to none on this. So uh, I have nothing but good things to say about the ISC. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the host. Well, thank you so much, Mike. First of all, you have us blushing with that glowing review. <laughs> um, sure. So we have the ISC resources available on our website. So a lot of what we actually discussed today, especially regarding some of the specific products, you will be able to learn more if you check out ISC's website, isc.com slash ETF and isc.com slash index. And do make sure to also check out our free ETF trade alerts. They're great if you are not really so familiar with these products but would like to learn more uh, they are timely trading ideas that are sent directly to your inbox. If you're interested in those, make sure to check out www.isc.com slash ETF trade alerts. We do also have podcasts available at isc.com slash podcasts. And if you do want to sign up for webinars or check out the future schedule or even listen to some of our archived webinars, you can go to www.isc.com slash webinars. So as you can see, we do have a whole lot of resources available if you're looking to trade products based on these sectors and markets. So please definitely make sure to check out these URLs and, and take advantage of what we have available for you. So Mike, I think we do have a few questions in the Q&A window right now. We've got one, I think, from Kay, if you want to maybe just check that out. Okay, I see. Uh, from Kay, I'm kind of in between the two. Need some help, but I understand options already. Do you do hand-holding? Uh, yes, we do, Kay. We have a lot of clients that we, you're what we would refer to as a tweener. Uh, on the previous slide, we talked about how we do managed trading as well as self-directed trading. Uh, you'd be what's called a tweener. You'd be in our third category, and we have a lot of clients exactly like yourself. So um, feel free to give us a call. Operators are standing by, as we mentioned. <laughs> That's right. Call now. All right, and it looks like we have a few more questions in the chat window, so I think we have a few more minutes if you want to just check in with those. Sounds uh, I am not seeing that because I don't, I don't see, see the I'm chat. I'm seeing one from Alice. Are ISE ETFs all liquid enough to buy options on them? You know, that's a, it's kind of an opinion right there. Uh, are they liquid enough? I think that they, just to give you an idea of it, I use ISE products with real money. And, you know, I'm not able to say exactly what I'm in and that type of thing because uh, regulators don't like that type of thing, quite frankly. But uh, I will say this, that I use ISE products with real client money. And some of them are, some of them aren't. But what I like about the ISE products is the fact that the bid-ask spreads, the, the, the volumes might not be there on some of the currency options that you may like, although they are a lot better than the perception is. But the bid-ask spreads are pretty fair, in my opinion. So um, I use them with real money, and I've been in this business a long time, so I have no qualms about using them. All right, and it looks like we have one more in the Q&A window from B. Wagner. Is there a resource to look at a sector and see what ETFs lie in that sector or vice versa to know what ETF, we know what an ETF and what sector it's in? A good question. You, know, you can do that. Uh, a lot of times like Yahoo Finance provides that. Um, like on those XL ETFs, you can go to spdr.com, and they'll show actually uh, some of the top holdings within there. Uh, so 
usually the company that runs the ETF itself will show what they are uh, for FCG, you can find that on the ISE website. I don't know off the top of my head exactly what part of the ISE website it's on, but I visit I visit frequently, but I just do it so automatically that I don't yep, remember it's what It's ISE.com slash ETF if you want to check it out. We actually have 10 different ETF products available that are based on ISE indexes. So if you want to just check out ISE.com slash ETF, they're all listed on there, and there should be more information available for you. Okay, yeah. So usually the company that's doing the ETF itself can explain. All right, it looks like that's all of for the Q&A. So, Mike, if you just want to wrap things up, I think we're all set for today. All right, well, once again, folks, uh, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about what we do at Know Your Options, uh, check out our website, knowyouroptionsinc.com. Uh, if you want to be part of our free weekly newsletter, send me an email. And just in general, I always, I always kind of, when, when Steve's around, we always kind of end with um, just the importance of risk management, folks. Uh, be concerned with living to invest another day. Don't get caught up in how much money I'm going to make on this trade, because if you get caught up on the wrong side of it, I, I've just seen a lot of people blow out in my, in my years in the business. So risk management first, how much are you going to make second? And with that, once again, I want to thank the ISE for letting me be there or come and present today. And prayers go out to my good friend, Steve Meisinger. Thanks so much, Mike. And uh, if anyone has any questions or comments, please make sure to send us an email. The email address is webinars at ISE.com. Thanks to everyone for joining us today. We hope to see you back next time. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.